Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where we do as the Romans do. Today I'm gonna have my own take at Carbonara, the essential Roman primo piatto. Piero, grazie. Guanciale? Sì. Due carbonari. Piero, grazie. Prego, faccio io il Grazie a lei, Dio Lo faccio io, grazie. Sì. Per due? Sì. Vediamo il buono? Sì. 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 So for carbonara, we're gonna need some pasta. I tend to use spaghetti. I like spaghetti with my carbonara, but you can just as well use rigatoni or mezze maniche rigate. So you can use either a pasta lunga or pasta corta, which is, which is short pasta. So you're gonna need eggs, just yolks, you're gonna need some pecorino cheese, okay. As well as, very important, guanciale, which is pig's cheek. So forget about bacon, pancetta, if you want to do it the real Roman way, use guanciale, which is pig's cheek. So, yo pecorino, which is a, a sheep cheese, should ideally be medium aged. See? Delicious. I just don't try this with parmigiano. Pecorino is just a, a much better choice and it's a typical Roman cheese. For two people, you're gonna need 200 grams of pasta. In Rome they would say duetti, two etti, which is equal to 200 grams. Okay? You're gonna need four egg yolks, so two per person. If you do three, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, just gonna be a little lighter, like one yolk, it's not gonna make such a big difference. Think in terms of halves. Okay, so if you're gonna have 200 grams of pasta, you're gonna need 100 grams of guanciale and 50 grams of pecorino. So 200, 100, 50. When we bring the water to boiling, we're gonna add some salt. We only put salt in the water because our pecorino is already very salty as well as our guanciale. You don't want your carbonara to be too salty and ruin your dish that way. But you most definitely need the right amount of salt for the pasta. So first, we're gonna cut our guanciale in about quarter of an inch thick strips. We're gonna get rid of the hard part because it's too hard to eat, but we're gonna recycle it for our sauce. Next, when we have our strips of uh, guanciale cut, we can then cut it in uh, smaller pieces because I like my guanciale to be uh, croccante, which is crispy. I'm not gonna cut it into cubes, but more thinly. Next, 
Next, I'm gonna break my pecorino. To our egg yolks, we're gonna add some pecorino. The goal is to get it as creamy as possible. It's a bit too thick now. So what I'm gonna do now is to use some of this water. It's called acqua di cottura. And to this delightful cremina, I'm gonna add some black pepper. For our guanciale, we need a pan like this in a medium fire. We're gonna use the hard bits now. And basically we want the, the, the fat to melt. I'm adding one chale and I'm gonna leave it on fire until the fat melts. Okay, our water is boiling, our guanciale is in the pan and it's time to uh, measure our pasta. Okay, I need 200 grams. We're gonna add our pasta like so. The packaging says 10 minutes, but we're gonna leave it in the water for 9 minutes. Shallow looks about right. The fat has melted. Okay. I'm gonna take it off the fire now. And I'm gonna use a little trick. Okay. I'm gonna use this wooden spoon to get a bit of an angle so that guanciale stays nice and crisp. Yeah, that's about right. Now we need a colander to strain our pasta. But we're gonna reuse some of that acqua di cottura. We're gonna add our pasta to our guanciale now. Now we're gonna take it off the fire. We add in our egg yolks in pecorino. We're gonna add a little more of acqua di cottura. a bit more. So we get nice and creamy sauce.
Okay, we're gonna add a little, little bit of pecorino. A little bit of black pepper. And now, we're gonna taste our carbonara. I'm happy, I think it's pretty good. The final piece of advice, don't leave your carbonara to sit in the plate. You need to eat it right away. Don't let it sit for two minutes, for a minute, half minute. Just enjoy it right away because carbonara cannot sit in the plate. Bon appetito.